Hello everybody and welcome to Data Science Foundations. Uh, today we're going to be talking about cross-validation, which is the answer to our previous question. Uh, and what was that question? That was, we know that there's a bias variance trade-off when selecting for models. So how do we achieve best results in this bias variance trade-off? Well, it turns out you just choose the best regularization penalty. And the regularization was a programmatic way in order to tell the model how big it should be. How do you choose the best regularization penalty? Well, this is the question. And ultimately, the answer will be validation or cross-validation. Um, so what do we generally do? So generally speaking, in machine learning, we'll split our data into three sets. So set number one is the training set. Uh, this set will be what, we, what the computer uses in order to choose the best hypothesis from the hypothesis set. We then have the, uh, the, second, the second of these things being the validation set. This is what we use in order to choose the best hypothesis set, aka choose the best regularization. And then the test set, which we'll use just once. We just use this once. And this is in order to estimate how well our model will do in the real world. So let's sort of walk through this. And I'll mention a problem with using this validation set approach. Okay, so we have our data. Uh, it's very simple. It's a sine wave. So x is, is negative 1 to 1, y is negative 1 to 1. I go ahead and I split the data into uh, validation, train, and test. So I'll have test, validation, and train. And I find the error as I decrease the regularization. So over here, uh, here we go. Uh, so this is as I decrease the regularization, what happens to the error? And as you can see, the train error just drops. As you decrease the model, uh, the regularization, the train error will just drop. And the reason is, you know, as the, as the model gets more expressive, it's able to account for every small detail in the training set. But notice something interesting. And what we actually care about is the test error. As we decrease the regularization, the test error drops for a while, and then it kind of increases. It kind of just bumps up a little bit. Uh, this is fairly common. So, so you will see this with simple machine learning models. Um, so in this case, what do we do? We would want to pick the area with the lowest test error right here. Uh, what does the training set tell us the lowest error would be? Well, it, it says we should keep going. It says we should probably have zero regularization. But what does the validation set say? Well, the validation set's pretty close to the test error, and it would give us something pretty similar to what the test error would say. It would give us a pretty good estimate of where we should actually choose. So the validation set seems to work, right? So we, what we'd do is we wouldn't, you know, in general, we wouldn't be able to look at this actual test set because you can only look at this once, but we'd use the validation set in order to choose what the best regularization would be. What's the problem? Well, if you remember, uh, the, the problem with the, uh, with the bias variance trade-off is it doesn't just trade off between model complexity. It actually trades off between the amount of data points that you have. If you increase the number of data points, the bias variance trade-off changes. So in this case, the variance penalty becomes less. What did we do when we split our data between training and validation? We decreased the number of data points. So in fact, if we decrease the number of data points in this case, the validation error is going to look a little bit funky. Why? Well, in the real world, what we do is we split our data into validation and train. We then figure out using validation, what is the best error that we can go ahead and get. So in this case, you know, what, what, is, what is the absolute you know, best regularization penalty to use? Uh, and then we, then we could go ahead and sort of re, re, you know, put them together all, all at once. And we can, um, so we, we sort of smash them all together all at once. Uh, and, and then we retrain our model. But on this retrain model, this might not be the best uh, regularization penalty you can use. Now, now, generally speaking, if you have enough data points, it will not matter. But I'll teach you a small trick that can help. Um, so let's just sort of look at this problem. So I went ahead and I did this sort of validation technique with using fewer validation samples and more training samples. And we can see it here. Uh, the, val the validation gets a little bit haywire. And as I decrease it even more, the validation set accuracy becomes very different from the test accuracy. So let's say I wanted to eliminate this problem I talked about. So I've got a couple of training set points and I've got some validation set points. And I wanted to increase the number of training set points so that my validation regularization penalization would be correct for the rest of the points. So the problem is, as I decrease the number of points in my validation set and increase the number of points in my training set, the validation error becomes sort of, it goes haywire. We don't have enough points to actually get a good read on what the test error would be. So in smaller data regimes, this is a big problem. So what do you do? 
you're, you're sort of stuck between this rock and a hard place. You either get a very poor read on what your test area is from the validation set, or you get a very poor read on what the actual bias tr uh, variance trade-off will be when you uh, are able to combine the data. Let's say if you had to use half of your data for validation and half for test. So for smaller data problems, what people will do is something called cross-validation. And so what cross-validation will do is they will split the data into X groups randomly. So I chose five because five is an easy number. And generally speaking, I think in this example down here, I split it into, um, I've got a training set. So I split it into 20 groups actually randomly or 21 groups. Uh, so I split the data into five groups randomly. I use four of these groups for training and the last group for validation. And I repeat this process four times and I average the validation results together. So what I do is I'm able to use lots and lots of points for training, right? Because in this case, I had a very small training set. So I had 20 for training set. I'll just have one for validation set. So I've got, I've got 20 points for training and one for validation. But because I repeat this process 21 times, I'm able to get a very good read on what validation is. So not only do I get a re really good read on what the validation is in relation to the test, so the validation accuracy will be really good, but I also... Um, Get a, get a really good sense of what the bias variance trade-off would be since I'm using the majority of the points as I would when I would train it normally. Um, so let's just sort of check this out. Uh, a lot of code, so do check that out on GitHub. I'll go ahead and put the links down below. So check them in the, in the description. So once again, I plan out three things. The validation accuracy is all over. It's pretty terrible. Uh, but the cross-validation accuracy, which is what we used, is actually really close to the test error once again. So even though each time we did cross-validation, we just had one point in the cross-validation, uh, this is generally called leave one out. It's a very good representative for what the test set accuracy will be. Okay, so that's cross-validation. So that's both validation and cross-validation. Um, I already mentioned this final hack. What you will always do is you will go ahead and train your validation and your, uh, you'll go ahead and, and train, you'll combine your validation and your training set accuracy right before you, you test on your test set and you'll go ahead and train a new model up using all of the data. Okay. So we learned how to use cross-validation. We learned how to go ahead and do validation. We learned how to pick regularization penalties. We got most of the stuff done. Um, as always, you know, if, if you would like to answer the, the comprehension questions, just go ahead, write them down on a piece of paper. Once you're done with them, check the comments below. If anyone has answered what you have answered, just give them a thumbs up. If not, then just go ahead and put your answer down there. And I'll, I'll be happy to sort of look at it and, and put a comment there as well. And also feel free to comment on other people's in, in, in a polite, respectful way. Okay, so next class we're gonna be learning uh, how we actually, uh, well, a very, very powerful technique called bagging um, and how we can actually use the ideas that we have learned in the past of this class in order to prove that bagging is incredibly, uh, well, an, an incredibly sophisticated and, and great technique in order to increase performance. Um, after that, we'll kind of have two uh, conclusion lectures and then I think you guys are ready to, ready to dip your feet more into machine learning. Um, so, so thanks. And uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If not, just sort of comment and say like, hey, Nate, you know, I, I really think that you should have had more focus on the code or, or whatever. I'm, I'm always looking to improve. Thanks.